Hi, this is B Marshall, founder of Yes Parenting, and I'm here with Scott Swain, who is an NBC trainer. This is video two in the five-part video series on nonviolent communication, also known as NVC. In this video, Scott is going to take us through the process that he outlined in video one, and he's going to go a little bit deeper into it so you have a really clear, practical understanding of how to start using NVC. And we're also going to do a little bit of role play so that you can see NBC in action. So, Scott, would you kind of pick up where you left off on the first video and take us through those four steps in a little bit more detail so that we can really start to get a grip of like how we give and receive empathy? Okay, yeah, thank you. A brief review of the, uh, the formula that NVC uses for us as beginners to learn and practice NVC, and that is it's O-F-N-R, and that means observation, or stands for observation, feeling, need, and request. So the observation part, we really want to share with either if we're doing self-empathy or other empathy, and I'm going to focus more on other empathy right now. They're pretty much identical. The observation, we want to, sh to state out loud a situation as a camera or a robot or some emotionless objective being might observe or machine even, um, because we want to really separate out and understand the difference between what happens and our interpretation and a perception right. of what I think that's super important. Yeah. So the observation part, um, we, uh, a friend might tell us a story, okay? And we're, we want to be empathetic to that story rather than replying with advice or trying to help them fix the story or reassure them. Rather than those things, we want to be with them in that story as much as we can. So here's where we start out with the observation to help both of us get to something that I'll reveal in a moment. So it might be like, oh, wow. So when you were there on the scene, you know, when, when you were there at the, the restaurant and the man said that thing to you and he said this, and I'm imagining in your position when you heard him say that, that did you feel like kind of embarrassed because you had a need for privacy that was not getting met? And now I'm being really clinical here, by the way. I can be colloquial with this, but I'm going to be clinical so we see the different pieces and how they work together, okay? So I'm going to take this step by step, and I'm going to back up and go forward and make it real clear. So when you, when you were there in that spot and you heard and you saw this, okay, when, when I'm saying this, it's helping me get into that person's shoes. It's the first step. And it makes it easier for me to connect with their feelings or at least guess. And that's what we're doing. We're just guessing. Mm -hmm. And it, this guessing has so many benefits. And I'll talk about that later in the benefits part. I'm tempted to go there now, but, but I want to be real, um, you know, succinct. Okay, so we have the observation. Then we have the feeling where we're asking them, were you feeling this? And then we have the need. Because you had a need for you know, being, you know, pri your privacy or, mm. and then they might say, no, it was a need for respect or consideration. Uh, mm. But we want, we, we, we want to say it in a way that shows them that we want to hear their truth. Mm -hmm. We don't want to bully them into feeling a certain way. We don't need to be right. Okay. We, we want to let go of all that. We're letting go. In fact, this kind of empathy is a practice of letting go of self in a temporary way okay, um, where we don't we're not agreeing or disagreeing with them we're really wanting to go into their perspective okay so the final piece of that formula the o f n r formula observation feeling need and request is the positive doable request which we don't always have to do we can just ask them the question of hey did you feel this and are you needing this and wait and in fact, in real life, we, we don't really necessarily need to do it all in one sentence. In fact, I'd recommend mm. not. That's, that's for later, okay? For now, we'll just be clinical with it. Um, so the positive doable request is the final part of that formula. And it might be like, hey, do you want some reassurance right now? Or do you want to share more with me about this situation or whatever? But notice these are questions. Again, 
we request, we do not demand. And that is an important principle underlying NVC that is the idea that we do not want people to do anything for any reason other than their own. Mm. Okay. We, um, so in that particular situation, it doesn't, the, the positive doable request doesn't fit as well. We might, it might be uh, other situations where it's like, Hey, would you like to go with me to the amusement park? And the person says, no, then that's their right to say no. And it, it's, it's up to us to be okay with that. I just wanted to chip in there. I think because so often as parents in our direct, in our direct relationship with our kids, there are times when we're kind of always having to like hold ourselves back because we've often been raised in an authoritarian way where it's like, no, you do this now because I've said so. So there's this often this part within us that wants to just go into that because that's what we've learned. So it's, that is a real challenge as parents when we begin to use this model of, um, you know, giving empathy and connecting with the needs and making a request that is so challenging, I think, when we first start out doing this with our kids. That's, that's actually, I'm glad you said that because it brings me back to, hey, this is about parenting more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And that, I, I hear you, that that's probably the most difficult part of introducing NBC into a family where it has not been used before, especially. Probably more often than not, it's a, either an authoritarian or a permissive model. And um, either of those models, you know, if the child is used to either getting their way or being bullied into doing whatever the parent wants, so everything is a demand, and a parent expresses something, expresses empathy in this model that I've shown you, where it is not a demand, it's a request. And even there, it might, you know, the, the, especially in the beginning, the parent might have some realizations that they were trying to be to do a request, but it was really a demand. But let's put that aside for a second. Sure. So the child is used to hearing demands and the parent comes and says, hey, um, would you be willing to, um, you know, wear these shoes, put some shoes on or whatever. And the kid might typically be okay with putting the shoes on, but they're rebelling. They're like, cause they're hearing this request as a demand. So they're sticking up for their own autonomy and choice. And of course, that's where the parent needs to be really patient and just stick with the empathy. Like, oh, do you hear that as a as a demand? Are you you know so used to the way we used to do things that when I ask you this question, um, do you you really have a need for autonomy? Um, and of course, you know, in the beginning, these kids are not going to have this vocabulary. They'll right. figure it out. They'll figure it out really fast. Um, oh boy, you'll be amazed. So first, they'll be like, "What the heck are you talking about, mom? Autonomy." Well, you know, and that's where you help them understand, of course. Yeah. I think actually that for a lot of people new to NVC, the, 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 a lot of the vocabulary is very new to us as grown-ups starting to, to use this. I did remember the, the other thing that I was going to say, which is one of, the, one of my personal challenges as a parent, choosing to parent in a different way from conventional parenting has been the reali realization that I, I believe that a key role for me as a parent is that I am responsible for establishing and protect protecting my children's boundaries. And then as they grow up, I support them to learn how to establish and protect their own boundaries. And then they go into adulthood and they're equipped at it. And of course, children are very clear on their boundaries from a very early age. And you often see that very clearly when it's, children are in a peer, peer-to-peer -peer kind of exchange. And so many parents in conventional parenting will try to um, discourage their child from having a clear boundary. So, no, go on, it would, you should share that with your friend. You know, it would be, it's nice to share. Johnny really wants you to go to his house to play, so let, let's do that. I know you don't really want to, but let's do it. This kind of trying to cajole and encourage our children into a situation that they've been very clear that, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to share this toy right now, or I don't want to go to Johnny's right now. And for me as a parent, I have often found it challenging to support my child to maintain and protect their boundary, which is a lot of 
this is is actually very ties in very closely with boundaries when another parent is doing the opposite and it's very interesting how so much begins to unravel when we begin to use NVC because it's not just about the empathy it's about starting to understand what's going on behind the child's behavior or what's going on with boundaries and you said something just now which oh my goodness Scott I was this was beautiful um, you said something like rebellion is when our child sticks up for their needs and their rights to choice and autonomy and I have a lot of um, my own personal thoughts around rebellion, but I was like, boom, like that is, that to me was just like, yes, what a concise and brilliant way to recognize rebellion rather than, oh, well, you know, the kid is pushing their boundaries or they're pressing buttons. This idea that somehow the child is being manipulative, which I'm very uncomfortable with. Um, I love the way that you, you so clearly defined rebellion as this child operating for their highest good and I that to me is like a magical nugget of gold so thank you for that I am aware that this video is becoming longer than the intended 10 minutes however I would really love a bit of role play you up for it okay yes. let's set the scene let's say you've you've just you've come in from work you've I had a sit down, a cup of tea or a beer or whatever, and then we're just catching up about our day. Does that sound good? Yeah, okay. So, um, oh, Scott, this thing happened today with one of the boys, and I, I just feel so mixed about it. Well, maybe you didn't leave him in the closet long enough, or... Um, <laughs> no, okay. So, um... I'm hearing some confusion and I'm, I'm curious, would you like to share a little bit more about what happened? Yeah, so we, we've been playing with our really good friends all afternoon. We'd had such a lovely time. And um, well, we were, walk, we were walking back home and I could tell that his friend was bugging him and he was trying to tell him to stop. And I was just, I was really enjoying the conversation with the other mum because we get on really well. And then just suddenly, our son turned around and just properly shoved his friend to the ground. And it was just, it was really hard because I had been hearing him trying really clearly to tell his friend to stop bugging him and the friend hadn't stopped. So I understand why he chose to be, you know, violent in that way. But it, it was just really hard watching it happen and just not knowing how to respond to the mum, how to respond to the other child. And I felt really out of my depth. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there you were having a nice walk with your friend. And you, and even, even there, you, you know, you're connecting with her and mm -hmm. getting some mental stimulation and some camaraderie and enjoying her company. And you can hear in the background behind you, I guess, um, or wherever around you, the children not getting along so well. And I'm wondering if as that was happening, you're starting to have a little bit of worry that it might escalate, or even if you weren't, maybe wondering, maybe having a little bit of temptation to interfere, but then deciding that maybe they can handle it on their own. Oh, I, as I listen to you, I think what I realize is that I had such a need for connection with my friend. Like I was so enjoying that adult company that actually I didn't really want to get involved with what was going on between the two boys. I hadn't even gone as far as the ways that you were, you were connecting with. I, I, just, I just really wanted to have that time of connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for helping me understand that part. So then when uh, the... You know, when your son shoved the other boy, I'm wondering if you felt a sense of a little bit of sadness and disappointment because the first thing was to hope that, you're, that he would have handled it more peacefully? Yeah, I, I, think, I think there's some of that. And I think that I, I felt some sadness I think actually that I had overestimated his ability to be in that situation. That actually he, I think, you know, he needed me to be able to step in 
and help him. Well, he was, be, he was being so clear that he wanted his friend to stop bugging him. And I think I felt some sadness realizing that he wasn't in that moment able to say, mom, can you help me? And I wasn't in a position where I was kind of fully engaged in what he was needing because of trying to meet my need for connection. So I wasn't able to step in to that situation before he then went to the next level. Uh, where do you think you might have been feeling a little bit of guilt because of and guilt and confusion like trying to balance out your needs and his needs and and just this this sort of wondering i guess we can't ever know what's what's right or perfect for any situation but maybe looking back on it and especially right there in that moment maybe wondering did i do the right thing because because if you're you know you, you're balancing out needs for nurturing and protection and connection is that close yeah i think the guilt part is really close because there's there is definitely some feelings of guilt because i you know it's important to me to support our son with whatever he needs as he's growing up you know and he ebbs and flows in that development and also i think there's some guilt because i didn't step in even though i could hear him telling his friend to stop bugging him so I therefore wasn't able to keep his friends safe when he eventually shoved him. So I feel like I, like kind of like I let both boys down in a way. Ah, yeah. I'm wondering how it was for him after that. Do you know? For, for the other boy or for our boy? No, for your boy. Um, I, I think he felt pretty ashamed and guilty. I mean, he just, he went off and he got really quiet and I checked that his friend was okay. And because his mum was there and I just said, I'm just going to go over and chat to my son. I just went over and I hugged him and I just said, I'm guessing you had some really big feelings going on to make you shove your friend like that. So I managed to create that connection really quickly. We reconnect with him and support him in that. I felt like I, I felt like I handled that well. I think what I'm needing I think I'm needing some, some reassurance that, you know, about who I am as a mother and how I handled the situation. Maybe some reassurance that I don't need to be perfect. <laughs> and I think maybe I'm also needing some comfort because I was a bit shaken up by it, you know, like because our son is not naturally or not typically aggressive and violent, it, it really caught me out to see him behave like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, since you asked for reassurance, <laughs> I'll give it. So in NVC, we typically we stay away from that and we stay away from trying to fix things. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the one little, I'll give a little brief uh, piece of reassurance, which is that I'm wondering if you considered the benefits that can happen from allowing a child to, to make mistakes. Mm. Yeah, I, I hadn't, in terms of what happened today, I hadn't actually thought about that i know that that is something that i i often think about you know that that that's how we that's how we learn is through the mistakes that we make and there's the safest place to make mistakes is in your childhood because you have that that safety net the nurturing loving safety net of your parents but i hadn't thought about that today and i think that's helpful to reflect on that there was a real gift in it of the way that i was able to reconnect with him so quickly and to give him complete acceptance and love when I think he was feeling ashamed and that felt like a real gift but thank you for reminding me about the benefits of mistakes yeah and there's another piece of the reassurance I like to give that's more you know you ask for something else which is comfort so mm -hmm. I'd like to give some reassurance that's more along the comforting um, route which would be just to remind you that it's so rare that you get that adult time and it's so often that you're spending the rest of your time taking care of these kids needs and helping them with their boundaries if you were to look at it in a big picture sense zoom out some i think you'd see that you're such a wonderful mother and just how much time you spend caring for them and even then i could tell that when you're connecting with your friend walking along you had an ear mm -hmm. to to what was going on with those kids so while you are feeling guilt and it was probably you know normal it's really a totally useless emotion <laughs> i think um, i don't know how did you receive that 
Yeah, thank you. I know that guilt's a useless emotion and it doesn't help me or anyone in any way. I think it's, it's nice to be reminded and thank you. Thank you for being able to see that even in the midst of me meeting my own need for connection with my friend, you also were able to recognize that I still was engaged and tuned in as a mum, and, um, and, th- and that's really helpful for me to see that as well, because I realize that I, I'm doing a flipping amazing job. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. <sighs> Great. That was really, even though that was just like role play, I feel like that was really cathartic. <laughs> so it's kind of like it, my reflection on that is that even in a a role play scenario, you know, a made up situation, like just the receiving empathy and and having fake needs being met is powerful. It's powerful even though it's a role play situation which just reminds me how much more powerful it is for people to receive this within their reality. So we are going to come back for video three tomorrow. And we're going to be talking in the third video about what some of the challenges are when it comes to using NVC, whether that's with our children or our partners or our mothers, maybe, because that's a, that's a really interesting one when you become a mum what happens with your own mom. So see you in video three.